Hello, everyone. Buenas tardes. My name is Jensen Sierra Lambert, and welcome to video number two of the series, Windows, Mirrors, and Sliding Doors in the Language Classroom. In last week's video, I went over the, this approach on how to have a more uh, diverse, inclusive, um, and equitable environment in the language classroom. Um, today, I'm going to focus on what a mirror would be in your classroom. And I have a pretty good example that I'm so happy to share with you all today. So first, I'll start by defining what a mirror would be in the Spanish, in the language classroom, right? Spanish, French, Mandarin, any classroom. Um, it is very important that students know that we think that their identities matter, that their identities are important, and they need to see themselves reflected, hence the mirror. They need to see themselves reflected um, in the curriculum, in what they learn, in the content that they discuss every day, um, because this gives them a sense of belonging. And students, right, make really, really, really strong connections with what they're learning. Um, and we want them to make connections because we understand how connections are a big part of their language journey, their proficiency journey, right? So um, one thing I like to do in the very beginning of the year um, in all of my classes is give them an opportunity to define themselves, to present themselves to the class. So here's something that I did this year with my level two, um, and it's based on an authentic source, right? We love authentic sources. This is an authentic source. Um, it is a the beginning of a video for a song by Mark Anthony, who is um, a singer from the Bronx. He's bilingual, um, mainly sings salsa, but he's also recorded um, many songs, many albums um, in English. So he has this sort of dual identity. And what I like about this particular authentic source is that um, it is an introduction to the song and Mark introduces himself. He defines himself, not with your typical adjectives or verbs. He defines um, himself um, through experiences, objects, and relationships, right? Which is a really interesting approach to self-identification. Um, so um, once we watch the beginning of the video and also play the song and dance a little bit of salsa, um, we go over some of the main ideas and things that Mark communicates to us. And by the way, the video that I'm talking about, the title of the song um, is Vivir Mi Vida. And if you look it up on YouTube, the part that I use is at the very, very beginning. So it's just a, um, a short, um, it's not a poem. It's just, it's more, to, more of a um, manifesto. He's just defining himself, describing himself. Um, and in a, in a rather poetic way, which I think it's really inspiring. Um, so we go over, of course, I wrote these in English, but, you know, we, we use the target language in the classroom. This allows us not only to review some of the vocabulary and structures, but also <clears throat> um, this also provides a window um, into a a, an identity that's that's dual, right? Because in this video, Mark defines himself. One example that I remember in particular that I love, he says, I am the streets of New York City and I am the streets of Puerto Rico. And so this, this right here is a great conversation starter to talk about bilingualism and how there are many people in the United States, right, who are part of a variety of communities, right? Um, so after we enjoy um, the song and dance a little bit of salsa, um, I, of course, you know, have them make 
inferences about Mark based on what they interpreted um, from his uh, presentation. Um, and to um, help them really, really, really understand the objective behind this particular uh, video and this self-description, right, that Mark Anthony provides, um, I have them do an exercise where they have to think about 10 things that define them. And I give them a few ideas, um, such as dates, maybe songs, maybe colors, maybe food. And um, they have to carefully think about these objects. They cannot have multiple objects under the same category. They have to choose one song, which was really hard for me to think of one song that defines me. Um, and the students came up with amazing descriptions. Um, so of course, right, we like to model the work that we want the students to do. We want, you know, we like to model uh, model this work for them. So I also partake in the 10 things that define me activity and um, use very important references for me, uh, such as foods. Here you have me eating an empanada and uh, drinking a cafecito or a cup of coffee. And I don't want to go over every single one of these items, but one in particular that I shared with the class was um, that I love, I enjoy drinking coffee, not so much for the taste, but more for the smell, because the smell reminds me of conversations with my grandmother, for example, or conversations with my mom that I've had uh, as we drink a cup of coffee. And so by modeling this type of description, they understood, oh, I'm supposed to think about you know, special things that make me, um, me and wonderful me. So once they have these 10 things um, that define them, I ask them to um, illustrate this, this uh, face that you see here, right? It has no features, no colors. Um, they have to fill it in with the things that define them. And the product is this, and I apologize that these are in black and white, um, but this is this is sort of the, the product and this is what I want. Now, once they've, they create these beautiful self-portraits, um, they get up in front of the class and they describe themselves with these objects, with these activities, relationships, as opposed to just giving the class a list of adjectives. Um, and yes, we're really practicing the language and we're practicing noun and verb and adjective agreement, but what really matters here is that I'm giving them an opportunity to present their identities to the class, to present their identities to me, and we get to celebrate those identities, right? And that's how I set um, the stage for the entire year and create and foster a sense of belonging in the classroom. Um, here are some other really good ones. Um, they get really good with these. And by the way, you can find these templates of self-portraits online. You literally just Google self-portrait templates and the students just, you know, trace them and add their own little details um, to make them more unique. And um, I display them in the classroom in the beginning of the year. And that sends a message to them that um, their identities matter. And I love the fact that they're all very different and they all have very specific things that make up who they are and um, their identities are celebrated through this. And that's how I start creating mirrors in the classroom. I want them to feel reflected. I want them to understand that their experiences are also going to be part of our learning journey throughout the year. Um, so the wrap up for this, after they do these amazing self-portraits, um, I have them 
fill in the blanks. And of course, this is written in English because I wanted to, I wanted all of you to be able to see it and understand it. But I write this in Spanish. Um, and as you can see, I have very specific um, uh, functions here, right? I have nouns and adjectives. So they take, they take these objects um, that they've used these 10 things that they've used to define themselves and that they've used to illustrate the beautiful self-portraits and they write them here. Um, in the end, they have this amazing I am poem about themselves that I also have them record. And eventually, you know, we make QR codes, which I post next to the self-portraits that we talked about earlier. Um, and sometimes I display them in the hallways and students walking by can just scan the QR codes and listen to those self-descriptions that go with um, the self-portraits. So this is how we celebrate their identities. Um, now, finally, I wanted to show you a couple of examples of other, other resources that could be used in the classroom to help to to help students feel uh, reflected in the curriculum. Here's a book that my French teachers, the French teachers, at, not my French teachers, but the French teachers at my school use, um, and I and I think it's super unique, right? That um, sometimes we, as educators, forget that the African diaspora, right? is very vast in the francophone culture and the spanish speaking culture and that it's important to highlight this diaspora so that students can um can understand that people who speak french and people who speak spanish and people who speak italian and mandarin can also look very different and uh, these these books, you know, this not only do they serve as mirrors for students sitting in your classroom, but they also provide a window into an unknown culture for other students um, that may not be part of a marginalized group in your classroom. Um, one artist that I mentioned last week when I was talking about windows um, is Wifredo Lam. And if you haven't looked them up, please look him up right now. Um, the reason I love Wifredo Lam because it, it, it is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, not only is his art diverse and eclectic in a mix of different artistic styles, which I use um, when I teach art in my classes, but also his life, his experience. Um, his dad was Chinese and his mother was Afro-Cuban. And you may have students in the classroom who perhaps may not be Chinese and Afro-Cuban, but they probably are of mixed culture. And having something like this in the classroom allows them to connect and feel represented and feel uh, reflected in the content of your course. Um, this, of course, you know, allows this type of authentic source, um, allows for me to do a little bit of history and um, tell them about the um, uh, how slavery played a big role in Latin American history, culture, and the language that they're learning in the classroom. Um, so if any of this sounds like super interesting to you and you would like to try this out in your classroom, I do have a few resources for the Mark Anthony lesson that I, I'm happy to share with you, either in Word doc or PDF. So if you'd like, just send me an email and I'll be more than happy to send those your way um, along with other resources related to celebrating identities in the classroom. Thank you so much for joining me today. In the next video, we'll talk about sliding doors and what it looks like in the, in the language classroom. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.